You've seen the p-value in journal articles, medical reports, and news headlines. It guides research, shapes policies, and influences medical decisions. But maybe you're thinking, wait, what is a p-value? If it feels like a bit of a mystery, you're not alone. Let's make sense of it, what it is and what it's not. In research, we're often interested in measuring a variable in a population. Since it's rarely possible to measure the entire population, we measure it from a representative sample instead and make inferences about the population. However, because a sample is only a subset of the population, the result may differ from the true population value simply due to random variation. The extent of this random error depends on factors such as sample size, variability within the population, how the sample was selected, and random variations in measurement. So how do we know that the result of a study is real and not just due to chance? To answer this, researchers use statistical tools such as confidence intervals and p-values. In this video, we'll take a look at the p-value and uncover what it really tells us. A p-value is a statistical measure we can use to help us determine whether the result of a study is a true effect or due to chance. It's calculated as part of a process called hypothesis testing. In hypothesis testing, we start with two competing statements about the result of a study. The null hypothesis, or H0, states that there is no real effect, and an alternative hypothesis, H1, which states that a true effect does exist. We then determine which one is more consistent with the data we have. Let's go through an example to make it clearer. Let's say we conducted a clinical trial to compare two cholesterol-lowering medications. One group, sample 1, received drug A, which lowered cholesterol by an average of 2 millimoles per liter. The other group, sample 2, received drug B, which lowered cholesterol by an average of 5 millimoles per liter. Now, at first glance, drug B seems more effective than drug A, with a difference of 3 millimoles per liter. So the question is, is the difference real or is it just due to chance? Let's use hypothesis testing to answer that question. The null hypothesis says that there's no real difference between the two groups. The alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, says that there is actually a true difference between the two groups. To determine which hypothesis is more consistent with the data, we use statistical software to calculate a p-value. The p-value is the probability of obtaining the observed result, or something more extreme, if the null hypothesis is true. That is, if there is no real difference between the groups. The p-value can range from 0 to 1. A small p-value closer to 0 suggests that the result is unlikely to occur by chance. On the other hand, a large p-value closer to 1 suggests that it is likely to have occurred by chance. So let's say that for our study, we got a p-value of 0.02, or 2%. What does it mean? It means that if the null hypothesis is true, that is, if there is no real difference between the groups, there is only a 2% chance of observing a result like this or more just due to chance. Because this probability is quite small, it suggests the result is unlikely to be explained by chance alone. This suggests that there is a real effect, an actual difference between the groups. So that's a good thing, right? But what if the p-value were 1%? 3% or 5%, at what point do we decide the probability is small enough to treat the result as meaningful? This is why we need a cutoff called the significance level. With a predefined cutoff, researchers can confidently determine what counts as significant, ensuring reliable and consistent conclusions. By convention, this cutoff is often set at 0.05 or 5%. If the p-value is smaller than this threshold, we say the result is statistically significant. On the other hand, if the p-value is larger, we consider the results not statistically significant. Statistically significant means that the result is unlikely to have occurred just by chance if the null hypothesis were true. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. This suggests that the drug being tested has a real effect. Not statistically significant means that the result could reasonably have been due to chance, and there's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. It's important to remember that even with a p-value of 0.02, there is still a 2% probability that the result happened by chance. 
But because we decided on the significance level beforehand, this level of uncertainty is generally considered acceptable. So that's how we can use the p-value and compare it with a significance level to determine whether the results are statistically significant or not. Finally, a few things to note. The significance level is a preset cutoff that defines how much chance is acceptable. It can vary. For example, if we decide on a 0.01 significance level, it means that we're only willing to accept a 1% probability that the result was due to chance. On the other hand, a 0.1 level is more lenient and means that we're willing to accept a 10% probability that it was due to chance. A p-value below the significance level does not prove that the null hypothesis is false or that the alternative hypothesis is true. What we can say is that at the chosen level of significance, we can reject the null hypothesis. Because tests rely on sample data and probabilities, we can't be certain, only reasonably confident, in our conclusions. A result that is not statistically significant does not necessarily mean there is no real effect. It could reflect issues such as a small sample size, large variability, or limitations in the study design. A statistically significant result does not necessarily mean that there is practical or clinical significance. In our example of a cholesterol study, a statistically significant difference in cholesterol levels may not necessarily translate into better health outcomes, such as fewer heart attacks, strokes, or deaths. And that's a quick overview of the p-value and how it's used in research.